LTE-HDL Toolbox contains hardware implementations of popular LTE algorithms along with reference application subsystem designs. We are often asked what kind of results we get from one of these blocks or subsystems when targeted to a specific FPGA device. We qualify these blocks across a number of devices, and in the documentation for each block we publish results for a popular device, but with so many devices available we can't cover them all. So here's how to check the quality of results for your device. I'll illustrate using the Xilinx and Intel workflows. The first thing is to make sure your FPGA synthesis tools are set up so you can call them automatically. This is done with the HDL setup toolpath command, which you can just put in your startup.m. First, you will need a top-level HDL code generation subsystem. The reference application examples already have this. For instance, with the MIB recovery example, it's that LTE HDL MIB recovery subsystem. But if you want to check the quality of results for, say, the turbo decoder block, then the best approach is to open Simulink using one of the LTE HDL toolbox templates, then to instantiate the turbo decoder block. You want to make sure you parameterize it the way you plan to implement it, along with the same fixed point data type on the input. Those can be set as workspace variables from MATLAB, but the template sets them in this initialization callback. Now I can just do a Control-D to update the Simulink design. The basic steps I will follow are to select my target settings, then run all the way through generating HDL and calling FPGA synthesis and implementation, and you can do this right from HDL Coder. Running through implementation produces the most accurate numbers, and then I will show you how to find those in the FPGA implementation tools. For this exercise, you can just choose generic ASIC FPGA. Then select your FPGA synthesis tool and target device. I'll start with a Kintex device. Next is the target frequency setting. For timing recovery and frequency estimation, I want to oversample my signal at 4x so I can interpolate the positive and negative peaks. So I want to run my FPGA at four times the LTE sampling rate of 30.72 MHz, which comes out to 122.88 MHz. This setting gives a target to the logic synthesis process, but when you go to program the FPGA, there's uncertainty in how much wire delay there will be. So I'll add a 20% margin and round up to 150 MHz. I'll just leave everything else to the default settings. Normally when I'm designing, I run these reports for quick feedback, but here I'm just taking the design as is and running all the way through FPGA implementation to get the true numbers. And this takes a few minutes. And once that's done, I can open the Vivado project by clicking here. The first thing I will look at is the timing report, and I want to see if there are any paths in the design that could not meet my 150 MHz frequency target. Here you can see that my worst path had positive slack. So my slowest path is about 2.85 nanoseconds faster than it needs to be. What does that mean? In hardware, timing paths are how long it takes a signal to propagate from register to register, or in simulink terms, delay to delay. 150 megahertz target means all my paths have to make it in 6.667 nanoseconds. In this case, my slowest path still has 2.849 nanoseconds of slack, so my slowest path is 3.818 nanoseconds, meaning this design could run at over 260 megahertz. And for resource utilization, that report is up here in the post-placement results. It gives you the utilization numbers for various types of resources in terms of absolute numbers and the percentage of the device's totals that they use. If I want to estimate the results for an Intel FPGA, it's a similar process. For this, I'm generating numbers for the CRC decoder. In the workflow advisor, set your synthesis tool and target device, then the target frequency, and everything else is the same. Again, that takes a few minutes. Then go back to 4.1 to open the Quartus project. In Quartus, the last step of FPGA implementation is called the fitter. If you look at the summary report, you can see the resource usage numbers for this block. For timing, you'll need to kick off a static timing analysis run, which takes a few seconds. And you can see here that there's plenty of positive slack for this design too, so it can also meet the target frequency or even much faster. And if you're interested in an FPGA family not listed here, or an ASIC, you can just run with it set to no synthesis tool specified and run your implementation manually using the generated Verilog or VHDL, which goes into this directory. 
This approach will work for any of the blocks or reference examples you want to test. And if you have custom requirements, feel free to contact us and we can work with you.